In his most recent budget, Chancellor George Osborne said, future economic success depends on future scientific success. But isn't that what all politicians say? My first question to Minister of State for Universities, Science and Cities, Greg Clark MP, was what makes his party distinct from the others on science policy? Well, well there are differences, but I think the first thing to say is that we shouldn't be looking uh, to create differences because science uh, goes beyond any particular parliament. And the most important thing, it seems to me, to have a strong consensus in favour of science and to make investments that will go beyond governments, go beyond parliaments. But when it comes to, uh, to the record uh, of my party uh, in government, uh, I think what you've seen is science uh, more strongly recognised as being at the heart of policy making, backed by investment, uh, than ever before. And it comes down to, to this. Right across the government, from the, uh, the Prime Minister to the Chancellor to my colleagues in government, the role of science is seen as absolutely essential to the future prosperity of the nation. So investing in science, both in infrastructure and in people, is investing in the future of the country. And so in difficult times, we've managed to, uh, to protect the investment uh, in science. And more recently, we've announced an increase uh, in the investment that's going into science capital for the whole of the next few years. But that's something I want to have a consensus around. OK, so um, thinking most recently about, the, about your, your budget, you, talk, you mentioned there the Chancellor. Um, the Campaign for Science and Engineering uh, immediately afterwards uh, said that their analysis shows that a, a billion pound real term shortfall has built up in the investment in the UK research base over the course of this parliament. Isn't the reality, I mean you, you, you say you're pro-science, but isn't the reality that science is, is being squeezed? No, I think if you look back at the, the whole of the, the last five years, this, as everyone knows, was a, a very difficult period in which almost all government part departments uh, had to, to make cuts uh, in their, their spending. That was, uh, that was again shared across parties. Whoever had been in government knew that they were going to have to make uh, savings. What my predecessor um, and the Prime Minister and the, the Chancellor did uh, was to protect the funding for science. Uh, and more recently, throughout the whole uh, of, that, uh, of that period, uh, and what we've done more recently, just before Christmas, I published a 10-year science and innovation strategy uh, and what we have announced uh, for the whole of the next five years, um, and in fact a year beyond that, is a, a science capital budget that will actually be rising with inflation. Do you feel the public feels sufficiently engaged in, uh, in what go goes on over there in policy making, or, or do you think there are ways in which you could help people to feel more empowered? There is a huge interest uh, and growing interest in science. Let me take one uh, example that I think can uh, can help with that. Uh, space. We are fantastically good uh, in this country uh, at space. We have later this year uh, Tim Peake going to the International Space Station, uh, a UK uh, astronaut who is going to be conducting scientific experiments here. It's a really important opportunity uh, for people of all ages, young uh, and old, to take a real interest uh, in his mission. The British Science Association is uh, keen that science should become p a bigger part of our culture, our general culture, if you like. And I'm wondering if you uh, and your party have a prescription for making science a, a, a bigger part of our culture. I think it is becoming more central to our culture. I mean, the, the political debate and the debate about the future of the economy has science at the heart of that more than ever before. But I think it should be seen as, a, as an enthusiasm for people uh, from all different backgrounds, all different ages. Uh, I had the privilege of being at the Big Bang Fair uh, recently in, in Birmingham, uh, and to see the engagement of young people you know, teeming with life across all of the, the different exhibits there, absolutely fired up with the potential of science, was incredibly gratifying. And I think if you reflected on that, you would see that the, uh, the, the science as culture, uh, as it were, is very strong. And if we can do more of that, uh, I think the better. OK, can we just talk briefly about immigration? Hmm. Um, now you'll be aware that there's a lot of concern in the scientific community that um, what they see as your um, kowtowing, if you like, to UKIP's attempts to get us all talking about the immigration debate and that that is seriously uh, putting off scientists and engineers from other countries considering the UK is somewhere to come and work. So 
Not at all. So science is a global uh, enterprise, and if you are as good as we are uh, at science, this recognises no borders. You want to have the best people collaborating increasingly intensively uh, with people from all over the world. And, and we do that in spades. I've been very clear that um, our, uh, when it comes to our immigration uh, policy, uh, when it applies to, uh, to universities, for example, uh, there is no limit and there will be no limit uh, on the, the number of people that can come from overseas to, to study uh, in this country. Uh, and we need to, to build on that. I think the concern is that you have done too little to diffuse the rhetoric, the build-up of rhetoric around the issue. Issue, and that that is that is um, uh, detrimental, really, to um, to our international standing, and that scientists are being put off. That that mustn't be the case, and quite the opposite. I want so to send the to, to I want to send the, the clearer signal that. Um, that our internationalism is one of the hallmarks of the excellence of UK science. But what are you going to do to make sure that that continues to be the case? Uh, I, I will do do my bit, and my my colleagues will do their bit uh, to make sure that wherever we go. Uh, around the world, we emphasise the attractions uh, of the UK, that we collaborate uh, full-bloodedly uh, in international uh, arrangements. The Chancellor says he welcomes more girls and women into science, but the fact is that if you look at, say, the, the physics A-level statistics, still only 20% of those taking physics A-level are, are girls. So what would you do to change that? Well, I think it goes right from, from early primary school right to the leadership of universities, uh, frankly. When it comes to, to teaching in schools, one of the things that I've done uh, in the science and innovation strategy uh, is to provide more funding for specialist physics teachers, for example. Uh, and we know that whether it's boys or girls, but if you want to make a real connection and enthusiasm uh, to get people who are expert in their subject teaching the next generation uh, is very important. The STEM ambassadors, 40% uh, uh, of them are women, uh, and they do a fantastic job in going into schools, talking to, to young people, enthusi making enthusiastic girls and uh, boys uh, in taking up science. But I think there's also a challenge at the top uh, as well. Uh, I think the leadership uh, of some of our institutions, uh, universities uh, and some of our research institutions, uh, are still not nearly as representative as the talent that is uh, out there and, uh, and is available. And during my time uh, as science minister, when it comes to research councils, uh, we've moved from uh, a position of 72%, 28% men uh, to women on the, uh, the research councils to 60-40, which is by no means uh, good enough, but it is a big step So forward. it's improving, um, but, yes. but you, first thing you mentioned there was, was primary schools, going right back yes. to the root of this, this problem, and the need for specialist teachers. Everybody yes. says that, everyone agrees that's important. So how does blocking attempts to um, improve teachers' pay help? to attract specialist science teachers? Well, we haven't. I think the, the respect for, for teaching is something that uh, is very important, um, and uh, successive education secretaries in, in this government have, uh, have recognised. But particularly when it comes to, uh, to physics and maths uh, teachers, we've recognised that actually you do need to, uh, to invest more in that. And in my science and innovation strategy that I published, uh, we committed to increasing the, the number of specialist teachers. Can you list for me three ways that the public will see a real difference uh, if your party is in charge of science after the action? Yes, well, I think it's continuing our success. So, so three things. First of all, the, the institutions that we have are already world-beating. The most important thing uh, is not to, to rip them up and start again, but it is to reinforce and to respect those institutions, including things like the, the REF, which for those uh, that are outside universities is how academics appraise each other's work. That's very important. The second thing uh, is to recognise that we, we all need to, uh, to make sure that we make the case for investment uh, in science, whether that's through the public sector or whether it's investment by companies. Uh, investment in research is truly that. It is an investment uh, in the, the future. Uh, and the third thing uh, is about bringing the next generation uh, of scientists uh, on board. We've talked about schools. It's also true in, in universities. That's one of the reasons why we took the cap off student numbers in universities uh, and that we've announced uh, access to a loan scheme for the first time uh, for people studying masters 
uh, and PhD uh, uh, subjects, uh, for example. Very important that we have those uh, opportunities available. So sticking with the, the, these world-beating uh, institutions, making sure we get investment in, and thinking about the next generation are all the important elements of success in the future.